Dancing can shift dimensions in the spirit. Hallelujah. I know Miguzako Zoten is a left. It's not about coming is a left. It's about a revelation. There is a realm. There is a realm of praise called Zamar. That realm is where instruments are, are just released. Just instruments. Just instruments. Just hold on because you're about to enter into a practicals. Just instruments. And they say in that dimension, that's where people receive the healing of bone conditions and anything that has a problem. Do you remember Saul was not looking for a worshiper? Saul was looking for an instrumentalist. They never asked if there is any worshiper. The question was, is there a man that can play a harp? A harp, that's an instrument. That's an instrument, hallelujah. And, and, and then in that dimension, the Bible says, David was found worthy. The Bible says, and from the tribe of Asaph arose a generation who prophesied with the harp. Oh, there is a dimension of these things. There is the wind instrument. There is the string instrument. And when they are joined together, we enter into a Zamar dimension. Tell that neighbor, neighbor, when we are dancing at Ujaleta Mchezo, we are still under the anointing and still in the presence. Tell that neighbor, you unguana imeziti. Kwa nyumba ya buwana ndo tunakubalika kuwa watoto. This is the only place where the Lord encourages us to be like children. Can I hear a shout of praise? I think we need some practical. Some of you, the way you look. <laughs> oh, we are, we, are, we are a young church. We are a young church. Hallelujah. Are you ready to just dance for one minute? So, you know, you have a little bit of 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 a Apana, apana, apana. We will praise the Lord. We will worship the Lord. We will give him all the praise. Tutamuabudu na vinubi. Vinubi ni nini? Tunajua ni instrument. Amen. I don't know what you're going to pray, but just play something. Just play something.
wow. Ni kama Manu alikuja kutuaibisha. Mungu anakuona. Wow, we want to release our Sunday school. Let's receive our Sunday school. Are you excited in the house of the Lord? Uh, this is where we come to cast our burdens, depressive spirits, oppressive spirit. There is an atmosphere where some things cannot stand. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate as we receive our amazing children. This is our heritage. This is the now generation. A church that has children is a church that has a future. We have a responsibility. I was saying to myself, my, 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 my pastoral judgment will be by how these children become. My pastoral judgment will be with how these children will become. Look at the book of Isaiah 59 and verse 21. Isaiah 59 and verse 21. We are so blessed as a church. And I want to assure you that our investment is on these children. As we were strategizing on what to build first, we say the Sunday school and the teens church. Main church to Neza Kaka Kwahema. Hallelujah. They need those facilities first. I want to appreciate, um, did I see teacher purity trainings and all the teachers? A lot of trainings have been going. We are believing God, if not to have the best Sunday school in Kenya, to have the best Sunday school. There is no option. Amen. Our children will prophesy. The Bible says, is that Isaiah 59? Isaiah 59 and verse. Isaiah 59 and verse 21. 59 and verse 21. We want to declare. Bona Sifue Sunday school. Bona Sifue. And if you don't know these children love me one day i was getting out of church and one of the sunday school kids told me pastor many bariki i said wow <laughs> so even if you don't give feedback they always give me feedback so you know i have my eyes in the house as for me says the lord this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my word which I've put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendant descendants, says the Lord from his time and forever. We want to declare that this generation, the word that the Lord is planting in this house, and the spirit of God upon this house will be transferred from one generation to another. And these are our descendants. We declare up to the third generation, the gospel and the Holy Ghost manifestation will be encountered upon this generation. Every Sunday school boy and girl, lift up your hand. Inua Mikonoyako, say, Father, I want you to shout, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I go to class, I have understanding. Today, as I read your word, I have capacity to understand your word. Today, oh Lord, as a young person, fill me with your Holy Spirit and let me know you for myself. Father, I thank you for this generation. They are not too young for encounters. They are not too young for the Holy Ghost. They are not too young for revelation. They are not too young, oh God, for doctrine. As they attend their classes, we release them with the covering of Zion. The same way they have capacity to understand modern science, they have the capacity to understand your word. Anything that fights the word of God has no power in their lives. I bless them and I covenant with their future. And I declare this is a heritage and a godly heritage. And it is in Jesus' name that we have prayed and believed. And every Sunday school student say, Shout a big amen. Every Sunday school student say, Hallelujah. Now you can use that door and follow your teachers even as you go to your class. Church, let's celebrate our children.
Majina yote mazuri ni yako e Jehova mumbaji wangu Nikupe jina gani kwani kila la kiheri ni upeke wako Majina yote mazuri ni yako we Jehova mumbaji wangu Nikupe jina gani kwani kila la kiheri ni upeke wako Majina yote slumber the spirit that disrupts our minds when we are hearing the word of God men and women sometimes who gather with us so that they can shift atmospheres so that the delivery of your word may not be effective the birds of the air that come to pick the seat of the word we announce in this atmosphere that none of that can survive I declare an open heaven and I release understanding over every son and daughter of destiny. Lord, we know we are unfolding and unraveling things that agitate the kingdom of darkness. But we know that this is the light that sets men free. And today, my father, I pray for the tongue that can speak mysteries with simplicity. I pray that the Holy Ghost will take charge of my tongue, take charge of my utterance. I lean not unto theology, research, but I lean now unto the flow and the frequencies of the Holy Ghost. I declare right now the hearing ear is open and the seeing eye is also open, O oh Father. I announce by the delivery of this light, 
deliverances will begin to happen yokes will be broken where men were under demonic oppressions those oppressions will come to an end i agree with the scriptures in the book of acts 10 44 that while peter was yet speaking the holy ghost came upon them may such encounters be experienced today not just physically but even those who are joining us online that there will be impartations at the release of your word we take charge of this atmosphere and we declare let angels connected to this mandate begin to govern the portals so that there can be a direct and an express transaction i give you honor and i give you glory and it is in jesus name that we have prayed and believed and everybody say amen, amen. let's appreciate the destiny voices these guys are doing an amazing job please we can appreciate them better uh, also if you even as you take your seats and please help me welcome that neighbor seated next to you uh, just tell them pastor T has said hi hallelujah hallelujah I just sense there, there is a lot of grace to teach today I want to acknowledge all the men of God that are in the house pastor Anita pastor William pastor Kanjago with your wife pastor Rashid is also here uh, pastor Ken Patrick and I want to acknowledge the presence of a young man that God connected us with him. He's doing a radical work in the city of Thika. Every Thursday, they gather in an open ground. Young people, uh, this one is the money minister. Just stand and wave the church. Um, that is a man of prayer. Hallelujah. He's doing an amazing job. There is a generation rising. And I want to tell you, never will it be written in our day that another generation arose that never knew the Lord. And so, I, I want to really demand your attention. In the laws of teaching, there is something called giving holy food to pigs. That means when revelations are deployed and they are not received, it is wastage of revelation. And some of the things I'm going to teach, they are going to open your eyes. I remember on Thursday, a lady came and I just touched on something by the grace of God. And I mentioned about how people sometimes, marriages are delayed because of spiritual husbands and all these spiritual wives. And when she had that word, she said, Pastor, this is what has been disturbing my life. And we just made a very simple prayer and that thing left. And I discovered the greatest deliverance is not casting out devils. The greatest deliverance is when you have the light that can never permit any devil to play with your destiny. The greatest thing that God can give you is not miracles. The greatest thing that God can give you is the word that worked the miracle. Miracles are just there to bring attention to the miracle worker. But God, when he loves you, he will give you the very thing that sustains a man to live a miraculous life. Today, I want to attempt and talk about the marine kingdom. I'm going to compress a couple of things and I pray that understanding will be upon you. Now, when we looked at the book of Genesis chapter number 2, we saw that the devil fell and when the devil fell he fell on the realms of the earth he fell on the realms of the earth i will encourage the one that is on the scriptures to be very quick because we have to justify these things by scripture luke chapter number 10 verse 17 going to verse 18 luke chapter number 10 verse 17 going to verse 18 this was after the 72 had come back. Jesus sent the 72 and he gave them power. That power in the Greek word is exousia. It is called delegated power. He gave them power and told them go and heal the sick. He didn't even tell them go and pray for the sick. He said go and heal the sick. He said go and cast out devils. Because when a man is operating under delegated power, it is not his ability.
abilities that brings the results but it is the power given from above that gives him the ability to access the results so they were released under exousia delegated power then they came back to give a report then the 70 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name even the demons are subject to us in your name and this should be your daily daily life that demons should not be something that disturb you i have seen spirits in my room but i've never lost sleep because they visited me otherwise i have just to remind them that ideally you came into the wrong room and and right there we can begin a conversation because one of the things i don't know if you've ever asked yourself what are demons many people cast out demons what are demons if someone was to ask you what is a demon tunakatana na mapepo aha mapepo ni nini hiyo unakatana nayo ni nini because you can't fight what you don't know you can't fight what you don't know the definition of demons is disembodied spirits disembodied spirits that's the definition demons are disembodied spirits they are disembodied spirits what does that mean these are spirits without a body they are spirits without a body now that open up another conversation because man is a spirit that has a body that is why when your soul and your spirit leaves the body the body becomes useless and we say you are dead so demons are disembodied spirits these are spirits that don't have a body and for a demon to affect us, they need legal access for a demon to access the earth they need legal access because their realm of operation is not earth. So for this disembodied spirit to enter the earth, they need access. And they need a legal man that is on earth to give them access. Now the Bible is not clear on the origin of demons. Demons are not fallen angels. Angels are creatures. They are beings. The devil was an angel. It, the devil is a creature, by the way. The devil does not share in what we call the attributes that make God God. They are things that make God God. And they are not shared by anyone, even man. One of them is the omnipresence nature of God. That he is all over. He is in me, but he's also in China today. Those attributes are not shared by anything that God created. That's why God remains as a sovereign and supreme being. The omnipotence of God. The omniscience of God. God is all-knowing. God is all powerful. Those attributes are the attributes that make God, God. That's why when we say there is no other God like thee, it's because there are attributes that you don't share. So, the devil is localized. The devil cannot be in all places, all times. Allow me even to explain. The things we deal with is not the devil. It is territorial demons and principalities. Let me go slowly. Because when you're preaching, you can sense when men are understanding. And you can sense when you're talking to yourself. I'm not in a hurry. Are we together? This will give you advantage. Because I know we always gather in prayer. And, and when we shout scatter, everyone scatters. What are you scattering? What are you scattering? So, we've said demons are disembodied spirits. Are we together up to there? So, these are spirits. A spirit is not something you can see with your eyes. 
the Holy Ghost is here, but we can't see him, but he's here. But you can sense the presence of a spirit, either demonic or godly. So demons are not fallen angels. We have fallen angels, which is a third of the angels that fell when Satan rebelled from glory. A third of the angels fell. And those angels, we are not given their ranks, we are not given their categories, but we know there is a third because they are, there is what we call angelic rank. And, and, and they are almost the ones that are mentioned in the Bible are around seven. There are only seven angels mentioned in the Bible. If you're writing down, you can write this down. And that needs a whole topic of exposition. Number one, these are the, the, the angelic these are the, the, the angelic ranks or dimensions. Number one, you have the seraphims. Seraphims. Makerubi. Seraphims. Number two, you have the cherubims. Cherubims. Makerubi. Maserufi. Na makerubi. Eh? Ni maserafi si maserufi. Sasawa. And even if I ask you who Maserafi, I know you don't know. But it is good at least to know kuna Maserafi. Because you heard in a song saying, Maserafi, na Makerubi. And you know it sounds very deep. And then we have Makerubi, Cherubim. And then we have, and then we have a, a, a dimension of angels that are called uh, uh, the Watchers. In the book of Daniel chapter number 4. The Watchers. And then we have now Michael mentioned, Gabriel mentioned, and the host of heaven. The host of heaven are the angels of warfare. These are the only ones you find in the Bible. In other literatures, you will find Rephaim and all that, but they are not in the Bible. They are in extra biblical text. So we have the seraphim, the cherubim, the watchers, the host of heaven, and then you have two angels that are mentioned, Michael and Gabriel. Those ones we are given their names. Now what we know is that a third of the angels fell, and there was a riot in heaven. And when the a third fell, the fallen angels are not demons. Demons are disembodied spirits, but angels are created creatures. They have a form. They, they have a body and they have a form. There are many theories written concerning the origin of angels. And I don't want to take you out of biblical literature, but there are many theories that are written concerning the origin of demons. Many of them. Because the Bible is not clear. But the Bible acknowledges that there are spirits that are called unclean. And they have a source. And, and now these spirits are the ones that occupy different territories. And they, every fallen angel, according to their rank and assignment, have demons deployed under them. Uh, we took it up to there. So... Whatever we call principalities, most of the times, these are fallen angels. And under that principality, there are demons deployed under them, so that now, demons, nikama watu wa mikono. They are the ones that do the work in a certain territory. I'm just addressing that verse in Luke, and demons left. The days of reading the Bible, hua hua, are over. Are we together? So now we need to get that very clearly. Nobody shares it, but I, I don't want to introduce you to those books, but they are written in an extra biblical book called the book of Enoch. Enosh or Enoch, which was written many years later. They tend to try to justify the, the, the reality of Genesis 6 and they try to say those who are called the sons of God were a dimensions of angels called the watchers. 
the watchers. Because the watchers were given supervision over the affairs of men. The watchers are only mentioned one, I think in Daniel 4.13. Only once in the Bible. And they passed judgments over Babylon. Maybe we can look at that. Uh, Daniel 4 and verse 13. Maybe we can look at that. The, the Bible says, I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed and there was a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. Go to 17. Go to 13. Go to 17. Uh-huh. See what happened. The decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whoever he wills and set over it the lowest of men look at 23 look at 23 and, uh, uh, and in as much as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave his stamp and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze, in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beast of the field. Now, this was the judgment of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the builder of the Tower of Babel my power the bible says while the words were still on his mouth a watcher declared judgment a holy one an angel announced judgment over over the affairs of men follow please are we together so a holy one came and announced judgment and said nebuchadnezzar you will be like a beast that's that's the prophetic coding there that it will be like a tree but the roots will be left because the man never lost kingship but the man became like a beast he stayed in the wilderness for seven years hair grew his nails were like the claws of of an eagle and that was the judgment passed not by god but by a watcher that's what we've just read so a watcher came and announced judgment of a Nebuchadnezzar. And this is the holy one that came from heaven. And, and now there is a whole build up of analysis that watchers are the angels that were in Genesis 6. The Bible says, and the sons of God fell in love with the daughters of men. And when they came together, when they came together, they gave birth to a species of men that were known as men of renown, the Nephilims. Giant like creatures. So there was a collusion of the sons of God. The Hebrew word there is Bel Elohim. That word Bel Elohim simply means a direct creation of God because angels are not born. Angels are a direct creation of God. They are not a product of intercourse. They are a product of creation. So when these angels began to have affairs with the daughters of men, and, 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 and you know, when people now study, they discover that uh, these angels also began to teach men knowledge of their realms, where they came from, the knowledge of spirituality. And they saw that the daughters of men were fair. So the, this, this is, listen, this is a speculation. It's not a revelation. What is a speculation? In science, the, when things are not well defined, speculations are permitted. Are, are we together? Are we together? Yes. So, it is believed the collusion between these fallen angels and the, the men, the seed they brought forth, when the flood happens, the spirits of those Nephilims are the ones that are called demons. So they are Asian spirits. Now demons don't die, but men die. Hallelujah. Demons don't die. Now let's go back to Luke 10, 17. I was just trying to, in simple term, I was just trying to tell you, a demon is a disembodied spirit. A demon is not a fallen angel. 
but every fallen angel that works as a principality is allocated demons under him or under it so that it now uses the demons for operations in a territory hallelujah now jesus comes and says the 70 return with joy saying lord even demons are subject to us in your name this reality is still there even today in the name of jesus demons are still subject to us it does not change now let me share it so that you understand it the realm of the spirit is very legalistic and that's why even if you are born again you can enter a territory find a witch but because you have not entered in his rank i know you know jesus is in me if you contend with that witch that witch can deal with you not because you are not powerful but because you have not ascended in a rank have you not read in the days of elisha Elisha never disturbed Jezebel and Jezebel never disturbed Elisha. Especially with our modern day Christianity, people are shouting spiritual jargons, but no power. Someone has been faithful to their altar, living a consecrated life. That realm is very legalistic. One night, I attended a class of witches and I've shared this. I've shared this and I'm not here to teach you witchcraft. I'm here to teach you spirituality. Hallelujah. So I attended a class. It was at three live on YouTube. How I landed there, I don't know. But someone said, Kuna vitu kitafuto utazipata. So I landed there. I was doing a lot of study. I wanted to understand the realm of the spirit because there are times you go through things in life and you must enter where job entered you have to interrogate the heavens and know what am i fighting it was a time i sensed things were meant to break forth but things were not working 2018 i took almost seven months in study and interrogating that year until something gave way so i attend this class and the funniest thing it was not being run by black people it was a class run by white people. Witches of our day are not in traditional garments. They are in suits and ties. Living in mansions and palaces. They have an altar in the third bedroom. They know how to do operations and get results. That's why some of you, the apartments you live in, you must convert one room to be a prayer center. You don't know who your neighbors are. Someone can do their stuff at night and interfere with the operation of that plot. Hey. That's why sometimes we dedicate houses. There's a place Pastor William was living. Nothing was moving. They made a prayer with the wife until they discovered where we are, we can't advance. We don't know the foundation. We don't know the neighbors. Hmm. One day we were praying and I told people during when you have the full moon, that's when people perfect witchcraft. There are people who anytime moon ikiwaka full, kuna watu wanaambiango toa ndoa nje. Enda uoge uchi hapo nje kukiwa na full moon because witchcraft can never survive without the moon and the sun. And a person called me when we were doing midnight prayers, a person called me and told me saa 9 niliona jirani nje uchi akioga. Nikamwambia na wewe Bade ya kumuona ulifanya nini. Mtu wa miactivate madabahu yake. Si unarudi kwa nyume kusema guy watu waliaribika. Ha! Ingia shift heavens. Now you know who your neighbors are. Hallelujah. And so, and so at this time, so I attend this class and I'm very keen. I didn't understand what they were. But what amazed me, what amazed me in that class they were learning something that was decoded by an ancient Catholic priest called 
the seven deadly sins and the seven deadly demons. And they had as, as capture for every demon. And they're in the Bible. Belial, Leviathan. Uh, the other one was Asmodeus. Another one was the demon of greed. Mammon. It was there. Uh, there were around seven of them. There was Belzebub. They, they were there. So every there was a sculpture and a name of a demon. And then the man began by saying, demons are not bad. It's only that Christians made them look bad. And because he was speaking to a white community, he said, you know, imagine you have a case in court, Linda, and we send a demon to confuse the judge to make a ruling on your favor. So what happens? The demon helped you. So now, they, they now they are being taught the function of every demon. Like Belial is the demon of chaos. Leviathan is the demon of gossip and twisting matters. So when you go to a church and everyone is gossiping, you know you have a demon called Leviathan. Yeah. And I tell you, that Leviathan does not fear, does, is not afraid of fire. It takes God to pull it out. Have you never met intercessors who are gossipers? Frontline intercessors. But they are the ones gossiping the man of God and the members of the church. Because you can be hijacked by a demon according to your rank of operation. It doesn't kill your fire, but it neutralizes your operation. The Bible says it takes the Lord by his hook to pull it out. Now let me not go there. So I saw those demons. Belial, Leviathan, um, uh, Asmodeus. Asmodeus is responsible for sexual immorality. Uh, then the other one is uh, this one for greed. Mammon. And there's a time I was studying about that demon. And I discovered that's the spirit ruling our generation. Because mammon will raise your appetites for riches. And mammon works with sloth. There is a spirit that is responsible for laziness. Yes? Yes. A spirit responsible for laziness. So you find our women sleeping from Monday to Monday. But there is an appetite to make it. So what is the way out? Sponsor. Because, okay. These things work in a team. You get the spirit of alcohol. Immorality will follow you. So alcohol. By the time we are looking at it, you are more depressed than you are. Because they operate as a team. So in this class, I didn't understand they were drawing patterns, how to summon them and all that, and sharing the function of every spirit. But at the end of the class, it was only a 45 minutes class. At the end of the class, one white student asked a question. And he asked, uh, is the Jesus of the Bible more powerful than these demons? And the lecturer answered with wisdom. He said, the realm of the spirit responds to the one that is highest in rank. That's how it works. So, if I'm above the spirits that are ruling Limuru, I have authority over them. Because they answer to the one that is highest. If I am not above them, then ideally they will oppress me. Because they can't listen to my command. And that's when the scriptures opened. And the Lord gave me the scripture and told me, where am I seated? And I reminded the Bible say that Jesus is seated far above principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. And I discovered why. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every demon must bow. Because you are doing business with the name of a God that is above every power.
power of darkness. I woke up from that seat. I said, hallelujah. I was not learning witchcraft. I was learning my rank in the spirit because I need to know the Bible says that we are seated with Christ. Where are we seated? We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places far above, far above, far above principalities, powers and rulers of darkness i said lord help me sit there because that's where power is hallelujah so demons are there but a man must sit somewhere a man must sit somewhere and the posture of sitting how do men sit far above anytime you go down on your knees you begin to sit where jesus is seated that's how we rule in this kingdom that's why if you don't love Prayer, Carlos Satire, is a Torah. The least attended meeting is the meetings of prayer. That's where men sit. And that's where the devil does not have a problem. And I'm about to hijack some of these Sundays. So that if I don't get you on a midnight prayer, we can make one Sunday a midnight prayer service. So that a generation can begin to pray. Because it is not the will of God for men to be tormented by demons. It is not the will of God for men to be afflicted by spirits. It is the will of God for you to walk in victory. And come back as Luke 10, 17. Come and declare in your name Jesus. We cast out devil in your name Jesus we saw them flee that is the church far above I said lectures over now let me sit where I need to sit church please sit where you need to sit that's why in the Old Testament the Bible says one day the prophets gathered and they wanted to prophesy and the Lord asked can I get a lying spirit I read that scripture I asked what was the lying spirit doing in heaven? It is in the Old Testament that God needed a lying spirit to go to the mouth of the prophets and deceive the king so that the king can go to a battle the Lord has rejected. He asked, can I get a lying spirit? And, and, and out of there, I just saw the light. I discovered he that is far above, when he spoke, a lying spirit had from hell. And it had to answer to the highest rank. That lying spirit is under Lucifer. But it bypassed the leader, Lucifer, and came straight to the throne of God because a higher authority has demanded of a lying spirit. Even demons know when heaven thunders. Even demons know when heaven thunders. That's why they used to sing Simba Wayuda and Agruma. Akigruma, Mapepo Yana. It was not just a song. Those men, those days when they were singing, those sang, they were not just singing. I know today we sing like old school, but they had a revelation that when the lion of Judah roareth, even my house must be in order. Hallelujah. Somebody say far above. Somebody say far above. Now, you see, when you don't have revelation and don't know who you are, and you are not walking right according to the disciplines of Zion. You can be oppressed. Are we together? Now, what, what causes oppression is lack of revelation. When you know who you are in God, victory over many matters in life are sorted. That's why we must labor to teach the word. Pastor Jimmy gave me a story. They were praying for a certain girl four days. The demon was not living. Four days. Four days. That spirit is not living. Day one. Something just happened a little bit. And that young girl was initiated through TikTok. Yeah. She just attended a TikTok live. Met a man. Left home. Went and met in a BNB. And there was transaction of blood. And that man hijacked her menses. And the girl was in fear. So what did they do? So they brought them to church and they prayed for them day one. She began to talk briefly. Day two, day three. On day four, I was talking to Jimmy and, and this is what he told me. He even, he spoke to that demon. Nothing was happening. And he felt, Nikame yo pepo imemdarao. Mbaka akenda kwa kona kutubu, kuliza mungu. Kuna kitu nimefanya ina ninyima authority. Pepo ineza nidarao aje. And guess how the demon left? He began to declare scriptures. And he said when he began to declare scriptures, 
it never lasted two minutes and guess the deliverance of that girl her menses came immediately and right now what i hear is that she keeps on singing daily something was restored some of these things we are seeing on tiktok initiations are happening you need to know what your son is watching because you just the same way people we say online lift up your hands say lord jesus the same pattern can happen online you are just taught how to draw a pattern and a son or a daughter enters into a very occultic dimension that's why you must turn your house to be a burning altar so that even if that young boy goes on TikTok, those spirits cannot hover some areas. Hi. That's why I labor in the word. Because that demon never left by prayer. It left by scripture. Look at that Luke 10. Let's look at it. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? Sorry, I'll come to the seven points. I'll come to them. Right now, I'm just laying a foundation. I have 10 points I will give somewhere. For those who love points, a time will come for you for the 10 points. But now, let, let's just flow. You write whatever you are learning. The 72 return with joy. Listen, there is joy when you see the kingdom of darkness bow. Oh, the first time I saw, uh, there is one of us who went to a high school mission and she laid a hand on a girl and she fell. And I tell you, I saw her hand on top. She was just asking, who else needs the power? There is joy when you see the power of God move. Hallelujah. The day you will say to a demon, get out and you see it move. You would, I won't lie to you. You will come to the mission office and tell them, I think now I need a crusade. How I have seen God move in my life. I think I'm ready for a crusade. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Look at 18. And he said to them, now, now this is the disciples. What are they doing? They are giving Jesus a report. And now Jesus gives them a report. Now, then they have seen demons bow. <laughs> they have seen demons bow in his name. Now, Jesus is telling them, even Babayao. Now, me, I never saw demons bow. I saw their father. That's what the Bible says. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw. That word is very powerful. I saw. He does not say, I made. I saw. I was seen. Why? Because in my rank is a demotion to fight with Satan. How can the creator fight a creation? I saw him fall. Oh my goodness. I saw him fall. Meaning that he was just witnessing that battle. The idea of Satan was to set his throne in the highest of heaven. Now we shared and said there are three heavens. The highest of heaven where God dwells. The second heaven and where we are right now. So when we look at the book of Isaiah chapter number 14 beginning from verse 12 beginning from verse 12 we begin to see the idea of the enemy was to set his throne where god was how you have fallen from heaven oh lucifer son of the morning how you are cut down to the ground you who weaken the nations uh -huh. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of congregation on the farther side of the north. Look at 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. So what was this being trying to say? So let's assume he's doing business from this realm. God is seated there. But he has a throne. So he's trying to say, I will ascend to heaven. That was the idea. Ascend to heaven and put my throne here. So that God has his throne and I have my throne. That was the idea. But allow me to tell you, he never ascended anyone. In short, even where he was operating from, he fell. That's what the Bible says. Because now, uh, William, now you are the one who wants to ascend. Now you are there. And Jesus is here. And Jesus is the all-knowing God. That even what the devil is thinking, he knows. Because there is nothing hidden in his presence. 
So the devil was saying to himself, the devil did not have a meeting of revolution. He was saying to himself, I will ascend. So this was a desire in the heart of Lucifer. And when the Lord saw it, guess what he did? Now this is where Revelation 12 comes in. This is where Revelation 12 comes in. This is where it comes in. Revelation 12 and verse 7. He now said, Michael, now come. Michael. Now, you see, I am God. Just stay there. I am God. I created Michael. I created Lucifer. I created Gabriel. It is a demotion for me to leave glory and come and fight with my creation. So what I need to do in my ranking of power, I told Michael he is the commander of the armies of heaven. That is the work of Michael. So in this contention, I don't need to fight. I just need to tell Michael and what broke out in heaven and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon is someone seeing this and the dragon as in the angels did what they fought where the battle was not in heaven where god dwells god was watching the match he was watching two creatures he created fighting i'm now sharing the devil of the bible hey. lucas 8 but they did not prevail Tell your neighbor they did not prevail. The dragon and his angels. They never prevailed. They did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So what happened? You, can you kick this man out? Now he must go to the third heaven. Now go to the third heaven. Now fall. Please fall quickly. <laughs> now stay there. Now listen. This is what happened. Uh... The contention in Bible is that Michael was enough and his armies to deal with Lucifer. The Bible says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. What does that mean? Lightning, when lightning flashes, is like the blinking of the eye. What Jesus was telling the disciple, it was such a boring match. The war never lasted. The man fell very quickly. He fell very quickly. And there was no place for him. There was no place for him in the heavens. Are we together? There was no place for him. So where did he fall? Now go to Revelation. Let's see where he fell. Let's see. But they did not prevail. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth. Now you remember Genesis 1 2? He was cast to there. That's where he fell. And, and his angels were cast out with him. No demons, angels. So they are that of the angels. Boom. They landed on the earth. And now there is a war. Somebody say a war. Look at 10. Everybody read. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Let me clarify that scripture. We need to get the context. A loud voice was saying in heaven. A loud voice. That was not the voice of John. This was the voice of an angel. This was the voice of an angel. Now, when the Bible talks, they are brethren. It's not brothers. It is angels. Meaning that one of the assignments of the devil, alikuangaule jama mtiaji, kazi ilikuwa kusema other angels to God. So the angels were happy. Ule jama mtiaji ameenda. This is the voice of an angel. You remember in school, you used to have that one man. When the teacher comes and asks who was making noise, they will wake up and say, who you? Now who you? Now who you? Now that man has been expelled. Now they are celebrating in the heavens because the one that used to accuse us is no longer there. But the angel now releases a woe. Hey, look at, look at 11. Has been cast down. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death i'll come to that look at 12. therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them everybody read say whoa somebody said that war is yours <laughs> woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea so there are people who live in the sea whoa 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 to the inhabitants of the earth For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. That war is a language of judgment. It's a language, it's like when Luo say Mayo. It's an acclamation of chaos. So now there is war. But now, when you go to 11, let me just clarify that scripture. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death when i grew up in a pentecostal church this was the scripture that we used to use so that men can give a testimony and there was a whole 30 minutes of testimonies after after worship we will come and say sasa ni wakati wa ushuhuda na walimshinda yule muovu kwa ushuhuda wa ulimi wao na kwa kupitia damu ya mwanakondo and I tell you, people will come. And some of them were not testifying. They were giving us strange stories. Pastor Nilipo Amka Subui. Nika akisha stima nikaone mepotea. Nika jua mungu. Ibilisi ya meingilia Kenya power leo. Nani token za ukweka. Nika jiambia mimi lazima nikuje kanisa. Nika akisha stuff. And there are people who used to love that time. And they will give you stories that don't look like testimonies. Nika akisha stuff, nika ekelea maji, nika oga na leo niko hapa, kusema yesu anaweza. No, that's not a testimony. That's, that's an economic issue, your tokens. The testimony there, when the Bible says, they, 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 oh my God, oh, one of their testimony did not love their lives to the dead. That means it was in the age of persecution. When men were taken to Colosseums, and when they were taken there, a man will be asked, accept Jesus or die. There is an old story of a man called John Hus. He's the one who prophesied about Martin Luther. And John Hus preached in the height of persecution. And he was arrested by the Roman powers. And he was around 85 years old. And they say they took him and they bound him. And they put firewood around him and they poured petrol as they were about to ignite it i don't know if it's petrol but they were ready to set him on fire they told him john who's denounce jesus and leave and, and and he looked at them and said whatever i preached with my mouth let me seal it with my blood and they set him on fire and they said the man died singing a hymn that is the testimony that the bible talks about that they overcame the devil by the testimony of their mouth they never denounced jesus even in areas where they were meant to denounce him they stood in faith even at the expense of the of the sword of the romans and the persecution sword this is the testimony hallelujah that a man can die for his faith that a man can stand and say you can fire me but i'm not bending my values i'm not gonna bow to the devil this is the testimony not an open door in an office no those are not testimonies those those are the deeds of a good father we have reduced testimony to be events after 40 days oh god i got a promotion and they added me five thousand no no you only huruma ulionewa a testimony is when you refuse to bow to the altars of power is when you go to a rorashu and the elders come and you tell them i rather not marry if this is the order now there you have kept the testimony <laughs> they can't stand for their faith one insult on twitter they block everything one one they can't stand for what they believe in the patriarchs of old death was a motivation that you tell a man i will kill you and say to be present is for you but to be absent in the body is great again do it quickly <laughs> that's why that's why we can't sing some of the hymns because every hymn has a story 
They say the man who sang, I've decided to follow Jesus. That man converted from Islam and became a believer. And he was abandoned by everybody. They took him and threw him in the middle of the ocean. The man swam. And when he came to the shore, he began to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. That song, we can't sing it. Because I don't know whether we can sing from where he sang from. I don't know which ocean you are coming from. That you can sing, I have decided. No matter what, whether my brother, sisters hate me. I have decided. Hallelujah. That's what now, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the testimony, my goodness, of their mouth. Well, why is the blood there? Why is the blood there? Witchcraft can never happen without blood. Every altar demands blood. Every altar demands blood. But in the realms of the spirit, church, when you go to Satanism, the highest blood you can deliver is the blood of a man. And the reason why people give sacrifice of children is because of the innocence of that blood. Because the innocence of blood gives you power in the spiritual realm. That's why it's very hard for people to give out their grandmother who's 90 years old. Many people will always deliver. You'll be told, we need that child. That's why they say sometimes it's key for us to be sensitive. Some of the people we call sponsors, some of them, they do business. Number one, either with the grace, whatever people call nyota, some of them just an interaction your life dies and others do business with your womb they will make you pregnant take you to a specific hospital where you need to go and abort but what they need is that fetus for rituals and perpetually your womb is tied to an altar so in marriage you come here, we join two people and say, he who has joined together, let no man put asunder. But the problem is not asunder. One day you know that you know there was a rich man financing everything. That man, whatever he got from you is more than what he gave you. Because now your womb is tied to an altar. Whatever you deliver must answer that altar. You might call it miscarriage, but there is a realm. I'm not saying all miscarriages are there. Are we together? Are we together? But you, a, 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 a womb was tied to an altar. So a man does not have a problem giving you 50,000. Because by the business of your womb, you're bringing him millions. Why would you test our Instagram? This is life. 200,000 to pay your air ticket to go to Dubai and pay. In fact, I discovered hotels in Dubai are not very expensive. With, with 10,000, you can have a room and then just do the rounds. Who to test a Facebook, not testing Ilienda. There is a place where you do calculation. Some of these men are not driving cars, they are driving destinies. This is people's life. Tell them you're pregnant, they will rise, they can even kill you. Hey. That's why we need to be sensitive. And they're not just men, even some of these women pursuing young men. Ah, how did I get there? The blood. Somebody say the blood. That's why people slaughter chicken. People slaughter goats. People slaughter cows. And when a man is doing a ritual on an altar, he must give speech to the blood. That's how the operation happens. So if I go, they will ask, what do you want us to do to Pastor T? And you say, your kanisa ina tusumbua, uyo pastor anguke. And then, okay, sawa. So he will go to the goat and place the knight and say, your pastor anguke. So what am I doing? I'm giving speech to that blood. So in the ranks of satanism and all that, they need a lot of blood. That's why wars, wars become a pool of blood. And where wars happen, sometimes it opens demonic portals. When we are doing intelligence of Alimuru, one of the things we discovered, there is an ancient grave of Larry massacre. Many people died. You go to Larry today and study the churches there. They are struggling. Because, oh Jesus, someone must arise and silence that portal. When I met Bishop Mother, he told me, 
when they were doing spiritual mapping in Kiambu, they discovered that Kiambu town was the graveyard of the soldiers who died in battle. So that's why they used to bury them. So they had to seal those graves in the spirit so that the town can blossom. It takes intelligence to know some things. So now blood speaks. That's why you cannot ignore a man doing business on an altar. Because blood speaks. But now, in all bloods, all of them combined, there is no blood that is powerful than the blood of Jesus. Number one, the blood of Jesus is not the blood of humans. Is the blood of God. Ah. Number two, the blood of Jesus was not shed in time. It was shed out of time. Before the foundations of the world, the lamb had already been slain. Before any demonic altar was raised, the blood of Jesus had already been shed. And that is why there is no other blood in the realms of the spirit that is more powerful than the blood of Yeshua. That's why we hear our parents pray and say, to Najifunika na damu ya Yesu, there is something those men knew. Because they understood a man can slaughter. When we began church, they slaughtered chickens. A man can slaughter. A man can give speech to his blood. But how many know the Bible says, the blood speaketh better things than the blood of bulls. The Bible says, the blood speaketh. It, it does not say the blood spoke. It is not a past tense issue. It is a present continuous tense that before any witch went to their altar, before any grandmother or father went to their altar, altar the blood of jesus was already speaking over your life that is why you don't need to shed any other blood you don't need a seed i know people have thought that when you are chinja and mesaba chinja nane that is witchcraft you they, you cannot be delivered by the blood of bulls ukichinja nane wachinja kumi well how is the calculation going to happen but i want to tell you even if they slaughter a thousand bulls one blood one drop of that blood is enough to preserve Preserve your life, preserve your family, preserve your community. The blood that speaketh better things than the blood of bulls. I am sharing this as light. What do I may talk about? When you enter that area by this revelation, just remember they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And that blood speaketh over my life. He spoke yesterday. It is speaking now. It is speaking in the future. Before the foundations of the earth. Before the foundations of the earth the lamb had already been slain what did we need from the lamb we needed the blood before the foundations of the earth the blood of Yeshua had already been shed before my great 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 grandfather consulted an altar the blood had already been shed before my aunties and my uncle gathered in a village and began to shed blood for the sake of my family the blood of Jesus had already been shed oh before they even exalted that monument to cast me on an altar the blood had already been shed i don't need another blood i just need the revelation that by the blood of yeshua that is why we always wake up and declare in the name of jesus let the blood of jesus cover my family let the blood of jesus cover my children let the blood of jesus cover my business let the blood of jesus cover life church because i know even where I cannot enter, the blood was there. Church, it is a language of faith. They can tell you yesterday your auntie was having rituals with your inner garments. They were having rituals. Okay. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood that speaketh. Do you know what he says? Better things. When men speak otherwise, there is a blood that speaketh better things. Because the blood of Abel cried for vengeance. The blood of bulls is shed for rituals. But the blood of Jesus was shed for deliverance. Hallelujah. 
That's a nice place to say amen. My goodness. I don't know how this service will go because I sense victory right there. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Listen, listen. You don't need to come here and vomit. You need to get the revelation of the blood of Jesus. You need to believe and know your money cannot deliver you. You need to believe and know. Know which is more powerful. I've told you. Jesus came and said, I saw Satan fall. I saw him fall. I saw him fall. I was not in that battle. It was a delegated battle. Michael was enough. Michael was enough. Michael was enough. And so, I was just explaining revelation. I'm, I'm running away from that thing of quoting a scripture. But I'm coming to the place of expounding that scripture. Are we together? So that next time when you stumble upon it, you'll begin to know this is what it means. So we see now there was contention in heaven. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, woe unto earth. Now this Revelation 12, this is the fall of Satan on earth. But according to Job chapter number 1 and verse 6. Job chapter number 1 and verse 6. We begin to see that Satan, the fact that he's fallen, he still has access to the realms of the second heaven. So one day God is having a meeting and the angels have showed up. And guess who shows up? Lucifer shows up. Just come. Sorry, I'm using you for, you are not Lucifer, you are Pastor William. Now there was a day when the sons of God came. Are you seeing that name, sons of God? That name is the direct creation. These are angels. To present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Because he understood the register of Zion. So he came and the Lord asked him, look at seven. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth. Do you know this scripture is answered in the New Testament? The enemy is roaming like a roaring lion looking for whom? He's not a lion. So he's always roaming to and fro, to and fro, trying to look for whom he may devour. Then the Lord asked him, as you are going round, did you consider a man, a man by the name of Job? This, this is God bragging on behalf of the man. Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth. What are the credentials of heaven? The Lord does not begin by saying, have you considered my son, Pastor T? That there is none like him on the earth. He drives the latest Range Rover. But, but then, please, I want you to get this very clearly. I love cars. I love cars. Please tell your neighbor, neighbor. Pastor love cars. I love good houses. In fact, my dream is to live near Runda or in Runda and build a good house. I love good clothes. And guess what? Mine is the prayer that all of you will get those things. The parking we are working on is a serious parking. But my prayer is that none of those things will ever look like a credential in your life. That we can have billionaires that are intercessors. Hallelujah. So anytime you hear me mentioning these things, don't be uncomfortable. I know some of you, God has blessed you and I'm not against your blessing. Please get that clearly. Are we together? Domusi seme ni kaa pasta hapa ni kaa pendi watu wa miomoka. Pia mini miomoka kwa njia zangu. Lakini what I have refused is for me to make money become what defines my life. Are we together? Now this is God. He's asking, uh, have you considered on earth a blameless and upright man? One who fears God and shuns evil. Do you know Job was the richest man in Asia? There are versions here that you say, alikuwa nosha miguna blue band. Nasi wastage new dosi. Shea butter. And then, look at what the devil answered. Meaning that one day the devil tried to interfere with Job. How did he know their ages? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Look at 10. 
Have you not made a hedge high around him? Have you not made a hedge? So Nikumanisha, as he was going to and fro, one day he attempted to enter Job's house. He discovered there is a hedge. I can't touch this man. And he also discovered because there is a hedge, this man cannot be attacked by any power that comes from my kingdom. And that is why the man manifest as a rich man in the realms of men you are called rich but according to the realm of the spirit there is a hedge around your business there is a hedge around your family there is a hedge around your life that is why nothing sponsored from the pits of hell can touch your life but there is a condition you must be blameless you must be god fearing you must shun evil for this protection to come upon your life and you can see the three areas around him one around his household two and around all that he has on every when you study the pattern of attack the devil first of all attacked what was around job on all of his sides he attacked his business his cows and all that then he moved a little bit further and attacked his children and his wife then he moved farthest and attacked Job. That's where afflictions of diseases began. And I discovered that's how the devil attacks men. He will begin by what is what belongs to you. Then what is connected to you. Then you will become the final character. That's why as a preacher I know that sometimes you have built stature as a man. And the devil realizes he can't touch you and he begins to interfere with your children or he begins to interfere with your business listen that's why we need to stand in authority and begin to deal with some of those things that are sponsored from hell and counter them now go back there because you have fallen how you have fallen oh satan but now we are dealing with whoa whoa is the earth look at Jude chapter number one and verse six the angels that lost their estate the angel that lost their estate everybody read and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great now, what is a domain? A domain is a place of rulership. Are we together? Now, now, Michael, move around heaven. Move around heaven. Just supervise the heavens. Yeah, yeah, like a commander, like a general. Are, we, are you seeing how Michael is moving? Yes, authority. Nothing can touch Michael. He has dealt with the enemy. Now, what happens? Now, the enemy wants to build a kingdom on earth. Because there is no room for him. There is no room for him. Michael will deal with him seriously. And do you know one thing? Michael cannot deal with the devil on earth. Do you know that? Do you know that? Okay. Because Michael is only mandated to deal with the devil in the heavenly places. This is what we call divine intervention. So anytime the heavens are hijacked, we always make a prayer and say, let there be divine intervention so that now any battle in the heavens can be sorted. Remember, the enemy can sneak in the heavens, but he's beginning to build his kingdom on the earth. Are we together? Are we together? And now Michael is moving around, securing the domain that this force cannot come back. There was a time where Michael attempted to deal with the devil on earth. Now go back on, go on earth and give me Jude 1 9. Everybody read Jude 1 9. Everybody read. Yet Michael, the archangel, contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord. Give me that in message bible they were fighting for the body of moses where was that earth 
Michael entered a territory that he's not mandated to fight. The archangel Michael who went to the mat with the devil as they fought over the body of Moses wouldn't have dared level him with a blasphemous curse but said simply, no you don't. God will take care of you. He, remember, it is Michael who kicked Lucifer out of heaven. But on earth, he can't deal with Lucifer. Now Michael come back. That's not your territory. Now guess what the Lord did? He realized, let Michael deal with the earth. But I'm going to raise a man. Just rise. I'm going to raise a man. And in that man, I will deposit dominion. I will deposit authority. I will deposit power. So, the Lord does not take out the devil. The Lord raises man. And he says to that man, I have given you dominion. What is dominion? Is kingship rulership. That's dominion. Dominion is kingship rulership. What does that mean? A king cannot rule until he secures a territory. Then you begin to rule. So now come on. So God first of all help me Holy Ghost. God has to create man in his level. The first creation of man was not a physical man. Genesis chapter number one, that man was a spirit. That man. But the authority of man was given to the spirit. Let's look at Genesis chapter number one from verse 25. Mutashika. Na munashika. Sasa mina kuambia wewe ni nani. Unataka kuniambia utashika wewe ni nani. That you are a spirit that lives in a body. Now. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind. Cattle according to its kind. And everything that creepeth on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was. Every time you read that word. The word there is functional. You remember? So it was functional. Then the Lord now realized, 26. Then God said, let us make man. The word there is mankind. Mankind. What does, that, what does mankind mean? It means now, there is a kind of a horse with its kind. There is a kind of a cow with its kind. But there is no kind of a God. So let us make a kind. The, bab, the word is let us make man let us that us people always say it is the trinity and have no problem but the hebrew rendering there is elohim when 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 when, when hebrew grammar is speaking of a supreme sovereign being they use plural so that's why now they have to introduce god as us let us make man make man and then this man because God is a spirit. According to our likeness, uh, let them have dominion in our image and according to our likeness. What is our likeness? According to our nature, dimensions. So the man God was creating was not a defeated being. That man was in the God level. Let us make man. Image, reflection. A man that has our abilities. One that is like us. Because you can't rule if you don't have God tendencies. What I'm trying to tell you. You are not a loser. You are not a useless being. You are a mystery. And a being of power. Hallelujah. Let us make man. And then he goes and says, let that man have dominion, territorial rulership. The original idea of God, whatever we call blessing, is a byproduct of dominion. Any 
any time a man operates under dominion things will follow you uh, over the fish over the bird over the cattle over all earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so god this was the idea if you want to know why god made man is for dominion tell your neighbor we are here for dominion that's no, we can't read that in your eology that is not the man God created yeah there is a level you reach until witches call you a witch they called Jesus Belzebub yeah I feel like saying something radical we are not ordinary men we are not mere men. Oh, when they count Kenyans, they need to count you as a different species. Don't fit in the statistics here, Kenya. You come from above. Where you come from, there is a language that ruled that realm. Let us. Let's go there. Now look at 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female he created them. I explained this in the gathering of champions. How can man exist as him and them? Man, singular. But in that man there is him and her. And then them. That man is not in the flesh. That's not an amorphrodite. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. That him is authority. That her. Male, female. Male is authority. Female is power. The first man God created was a spirit. And he was in the level of God. And he was useless in that level. His assignment was not in heaven. Your assignment is not in heaven. I know our evangelism. Niamoto wa jehanam. Najuli okoko usichomeke. Nasivi baya. Iko hapo kwa mandiko. But wuna fikiri ya mbona mungu wa mekuwa chapa. Kama ingekuwa idea mungu ni kuokoka tuende heaven. Ungekuwa unombea mtu wa kimaliza kusema buwana yesu anakuwa raptured. But Jesus said let them stay a little while. Because there is an assignment on earth for man. To have dominion. So God created the first man. He was a spirit. That is why now God must create the man. Of the flesh that's where you get genesis 2 and verse 7. i'm about to finish before energy levels in the chini nili sema sunday mi ntakuwa nafundisha maandiko why nilianza kuona pale watu wanatokanga wakuje ibada nika sema i can't waste their sunday i can't waste their sunday wacha tufungue bible mutu and they digest nyumbani because you coming here is a sacrifice a man has come all the way from Tika. I've seen Benihin all the way from Ziokimau. I love when you come and you can compare stories of Bibiango. A man who can impair Mandiko. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are here by sacrifice. A man who can say, I'm here by sacrifice. Kila mtu wapa metoka na hii weather. So, so it, your, your sacrifice must make sense. Are we together? Yes. So, Genesis 2, 7. What does the Bible say? And the Lord God formed of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man. So what, what was happening? So this is the man of the spirit. But the Lord But the Lord Moriah come But the Lord must give this spirit legal ground of entry. Remember, there is nothing mentioned about that man of the, of the flesh. It's only that he was formed and whew, there is nothing like go and have dominion. There is nothing like take over. There is nothing like he blessed them. This one is just pa 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 pa. Ruach. So what happened now? The Lord gives the spirit a flesh come. The Lord gives the spirit a flesh. Now hold the flesh. Now, what is the role of the flesh? The flesh is what gives you legal ground to be on earth. 
Now go on earth. You don't belong to heaven. Now the flesh gives you what? Legal ground to be on earth. Are we together up to there? Up to there are we together? So the day you die, guess what happens? The spirit will go back to its source. Come spirit. This is death. But the flesh came from the earth. We will bury it on the earth. And God will ask the spirit what the flesh did. The Bible says we will give account of how we lived in this flesh. Meaning that if the flesh is ruling you, you have not begun to live. To be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritual minded is life. That's why the Holy Spirit cannot work with you. Because until you fulfill Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your body. Paul is not talking to the flesh. Paul is addressing the spirit. He's saying to the spirit, I now speak to you. Take charge of the flesh. Offer it on the altar. A living sacrifice. The reason why we are not seeing the moves of God. Men are still alive in the flesh. Appetites, proclivities, desires have bound them. But God gave authority to the spirit. So the spirit must conquer the flesh because we are not dealing with a carnal devil we are dealing with a spiritual devil hi am i making sense to anyone so now the spirit now go back this is what we call death the spirit will be called back to give an account of what it did because the flesh now let me speak to the singles the flesh is not a tool of sex yeah in fact, when you read the Bible, the reason for sex is to bring godly seed. It's not pleasure. But when men don't understand the purpose of something, abuse is inevitable. This is the only thing that gives you legal ground to operate on earth. This one, the flesh. But now the devil has made it look like the flesh is the tool of leisure and pleasure. And that's why there are many. Today when I woke up, I had the Lord tell me, begin to raise wasted men. Wasted men. Men that are wasted on the altar of prayer. You can't find them in the flesh because the Holy Ghost has never partnered with a man in the flesh. The flesh must die. Once the flesh is dead, there can be a collusion of spirits and there will be manifestation of the spirit. That is why you must take charge of the flesh. Oh my God, you will get born again. But the body will never get born again. That is why Paul writes and says, Who shall deliver me from this wretched flesh of mine? And Paul gives a solution. He says, I shall crucify my flesh daily. Oh, the flesh will never die. Please tap that neighbor. Tell that neighbor, He mwili hayo koki. Mwambia mwili hayo koki. Mwili ni akusulubiwa kila siku. Unamuka asubuhi unasema nina kufa before ni enter nje. Why? Because if I live by the flesh, oh my God, I cannot do business on this realm. That is why the devil first attack to man was in the flesh. Dan, oh, oh, have you considered this tree? It was flesh. That was the first attack. Because when man, my goodness, when man, when man cannot conquer the flesh, the Bible says on the serpent, the serpent was told you'll walk on the valley and you shall eat the dust of the ground. Man is dust. Man is dust. Man is dust. If man does not conquer flesh, he becomes food for the serpent. He shall eat the dust of the ground. That's why the church must be serious with their consecration and holiness. It is not a language of just bypassing. It is supposed to be a reality. If we want to see power and see the move of the Holy Ghost, we need flesh that has surrendered to God. That's why in the upper room, the Bible says, and there were 120 flesh. Hi. They are all the Lord needed an assembly of flesh because even the Holy Spirit is illegal on earth without a body. 
even the Holy Spirit cannot affect us without a body. That's why the Lord says, gather and tarry ye in Jerusalem. Because my spirit must enter earth. How will the spirit affect the earth? I need the body to enter. The same principle is applied by the devil. I need a body to carry my spirits. So it's a contention of flesh. It's a contention because demons cannot do business on earth without a body. So the Lord is seeking for your body so that the Holy Ghost can dwell in it. And demons are seeking for your body so that your body can give them legal ground of operating on earth. That's why we need wasted men. People that can say, Lord, I lie on this altar as a wasted man let the holy ghost not hoover looking for who to partner my body is available work with me as you need to work take charge of my appetites and proclivity or, or you think it's a coincidence that you'll find a phd holder dancing on a table in a club a phd holder this is beyond intellectualism this is a body the head is full of book knowledge but the body has been captured by a spirit that level you can't understand it by attending another phd lecture how do you explain some of the most intellectual men some of the people in parliament some of the people in power how do you explain some of their behavior spirituality must be understood and so the lord introduced man in the realms he knew the devil is there but God knew I'm going to introduce a man that has my ability. Please let us not fail God. Let us not fail God. God believes in us so much. He knows Pastor Tears, you enter Limuru. See our Chawi, what? See our Wewe Utahama, you are Chawi Wahame. You are going to take over that territory. He knows as you enter in that office, see our Watu Anatumia Nguvu Zagiza, my Freemason and my Satanist, at the end of the a Apana. You come from another kingdom. You come from another order. You come from another government. It is a contention of governments. The day you understand that, you will know. It's not about pastor si feely job. You never applied by feeling. You never applied by feeling. You didn't sit on a laptop and say, na feeling can attack apply. No. There was a conviction is my season. There was a conviction. This is a door that the Lord has opened over my life. There was a conviction. So when men begin to sit where they sit, you cannot just get a job and become casual. Activate whatever opened that door. If it came by prayer, pray more. Whatever gave birth to your miracle is what will sustain it. If you are delivered by prayer, you will stay delivered by prayer. That's why you can't have one session called Deliver on Sunday. And then you stay a whole year without prayer. Those things will come back. That's why you must sustain a frequency of prayer. So the Lord looked and said, you know what? I'm going to introduce men that bear me. People that look like me. And those men will carry my power. And those men are going to be territorial men. Ah, oh, Jesus. And I will introduce them in the realms of the earth. So the devil was mad when he saw man. The devil was mad when he saw man. Because man was introduced on earth. So that he can deal with the devil. And the devil decided to divide his government into marine, into air, and into land kingdom. Have you realized in the natural, governments are measured by the intensity of their weapons in the three areas. Air force foot soldiers and marine as it is in the natural so it is in the spiritual we need to raise a man here to be spiritual air force watu wa kukamata anga tukingia crusade ninyi tuna deploy tunajua anga iko sawa wengine tunawachia foot soldiers au watu wa prayer walk labda mungu hajakupa gari jo anapenda walking style yako as you walk you possess so usikuwe na mbio na gari where when you foot soldier hallelujah and some must begin to deal with the marine kingdom that kingdom is the richest and the wealthiest the marine i tell you i said here around 75 percent is covered with water look at the book of psalms 104 verse 5 and 6. today i'll extend my lecture a little bit are we together because i want now to introduce the concept of the marine and then we pick it up from there How, are you learning something yes this matter i might deal with it the whole year because i feel in the spirit now we need to go build up 
uh, enter, reveal who Jezebel is, go and reveal who Leviathan is, go those areas, reveal who Belial is. So that if, if there be anyone here with a Jezebelic spirit, you will know, I need to deal with this thing now. Because that thing can arrest you and you're still born again. It's a fact. You can be an intercessor, but Leviathan hijacked your tongue. So we are going to do a one-year preparation as the spirit leads. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. Look at 6. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. So, do you know even in the sea there is land? When you reach the bottom of the sea, that's land. So the whole earth is what covers then water came into being and around 75 percent of the earth is water is water Are we together now look at this don't get tired today you're preaching with me look at this scripture in the book of exodus chapter number 7 14 to 25 the first judgment of man of of exodus the first judgment was over the nile so the lord said to moses pharaoh's heart is hard he refuses to let the people go go to pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water and you shall stand by the river bank to meet him and the rod which was turned to a serpent you shall take in your hand and you shall say to him the Lord God of the heavens, Hebrews, has sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed until now, you will not hear. That says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is my hand and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river, the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink and the Egyptians love to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying to Aaron, take your rod. Now listen, the marine kingdom is either in major rivers, major lakes, and major seas and oceans. Those three areas. They are either in major rivers like this Exodus, the Nile, the Nile was a God to Egypt the judgments the plagues of Egypt and this was the first plague the turning of the sticks into a serpent was warm up that was not a plague it was introduction of kingdoms when Moses introduced himself as per the kingdom he dropped the rod then he discovered Pharaoh also has men and they have rods so you can imagine who we are contending with have rods hey, Egypt has rods the church rod must be so powerful so that was introduction men of power they salute each other from power realms that was Moses saying hi to Pharaoh and Pharaoh responded and said hi so he realized I'm dealing with a force because I said here Egypt does not speak English. <laughs> hey. After saying hi, now he began judging the gods of Egypt. The first god to be judged was the Nile because the Nile was the source of life up to date. Uganda entered into a pact and Kenya, the East African. We entered into a pact with Egypt that we can never use the Nile water for irrig irrigation. Because if the Nile dries up, Egypt is not in existence. That is the life of Egypt. But the Lord wanted to reveal to Egypt, life is not in water. Life is in the blood. Okay. That's why Pharaoh woke up every morning to do business with the God of the Nile. And Moses found him in that place doing business. The turning of that river into blood 
was a symbolic meaning because life is in the blood that generations cannot survive by idols of the water they can only survive by the blood and judgment was passed because it was Moses I mean after that of course they did their stuff but judgment was passed over the Nile am I speaking to anyone judgment was passed in fact the 10 plagues was judgment to more than 23 Egyptian deities more than 23 Egyptian deities when you go to Judges 16 and verse 23 you discover that the God of the Philistine was named Dagon Dagon that was his name if the online people can quickly google the image of Dagon because I have it here that Dagon was a mermaid that Dagon was a mermaid it was a mermaid that image that image of that God it had the head of the man and the body of a man but the tail of a fish that was the ancient Philistine gods when you look at the geographical location of the Philistines it was next to a water body now they were worshipping a marine mermaid a mermaid spirit when you go to West Africa and even to Zambia here you'll hear the language of mummy water because I discovered the sea is ruled by queens there is the queen of the ocean the queen of the rivers and the queen and there is a reason because one of the greatest powers that come from the sea is seduction now the Lord of the Philistines gathered together to offer great sacrifice to the God on their God and to rejoice and they said our God has delivered into our hands Samson our enemy how was Samson delivered by the pathways of immorality so who did they give worship to not Delilah who was Delilah a prostitute one of the manifestations of the marine kingdom is sexual immorality that's one of the manifestations study cities that are next to oceans and rivers and look at their sexual perversion is always on the right the rate of HIV has always been high in Kisumu what is there have you heard of the madness in Naivasha that is where we had the first um, palace the first airport in Kenya and we had an Asian palace or, or uh, an Asian uh, Queens or Kings Palace a place where they used to come and they used to come from London all the way to Naivasha and that thing is still there for sexual orgies that thing gave pattern to that town when you hear of Naivasha what, what comes in your mind perversion immorality have you media have you gotten anything like that yes Play, project it let's work together we are preaching together that's why we have the screens Yes, are you seeing that? Are you seeing that image? This is now Dagon. This has the head of a man. And this is how their deity looked like. So you begin to see that Philistine was governed by a marine power. That's why when they discovered they could not beat Samson by military power, they shifted the battle to a spiritual level. Delilah came as a carrier of a marine spirit. And how did Samson fall for Delilah? He was lured by seduction. What did he lose? His hair, power, and his eyes, vision, and his life died. And that is the pattern of the marine spirit up to now. Hallelujah. In fact, as we come to the point, I'll share with you, I discovered there is a realm where this marine kingdom subjects men into prolonged singlehood and women. And then it baptizes them with the spirit of immorality. So you find a man who wants to marry. He has stayed. He's not getting married, but perversion took over. He's sleeping with everyone or even a girl sleeping with everyone. And anytime they want to settle into marriage, they begin to have these dreams. Of having sex with strange people. Hi. 
And anytime you open this box, you begin to hear, oh, you cannot have spiritual husband. You cannot, listen, the people talking about those things have never experienced them. Some people even sense things moving in their bodies. They can sense. I remember one of my pastors in Mombasa went to pray for a lady who used to literally sense a snake in a matatu and she'll even wake up and realize the whole place is messed up. Mchana, something is moving. So we had to pray for her. These things are real. Okay, church, I'm not here to store you. Vile mumenyamaza ni kama mnaingiza bariti. Mimi agenda yangu sio muingize bariti. Hallelujah. My, my idea is number one. We are going to eliminate every oppressive spirit that comes from the marine kingdom. This light is not to scare you. And I discovered there are two levels of engagement because there are people who consciously know they work with the marine power. But there are people who unconsciously they don't know but they are under marine power. One day when we were in South Africa, Cape Town, I saw men with white robes walking and as they were walking, they were carrying nets without shoes at around 8. And as the guy was driving us, who are these guys? And he told me, these are the worshippers of the sea. I said, what do you mean? They were walking barefoot. And then there was a certain cafeteria where they gather. And it has all these images of mermaids and sea creatures. And also that's where they do their service. I, I just needed some time to understand what they believe in. But you know, Cape Town is one of the towns that, you know, it's connected to a, two seas actually gather there the Indian and the Atlantic, I think. So these things happen. But let me give you a scripture so that you are not afraid and you begin to know that the God we serve is a mighty God. Hallelujah. I can't leave you where, where you are because you'll go home and begin to cast things that don't make sense. In the book of Mark chapter number 4, beginning from 35, Mark chapter number 4, beginning from 35, Mark chapter number 4, beginning from 35, Okay, you can have your seats now. I'll use you on Sunday. Make sure all of you are on Sunday. Where you have stood, make sure you stand there. I, I want us to read. Everybody read. On the same day. Now when? Continue. Now. When they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he said in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm listen the first attack of Jesus. Theologically, this was the first time that the devil attended to kill Jesus and he used the marine kingdom to interfere with his voyage. And now when you go to Mark 5, he meets with these demons in a man. Now go to Mark 5. There is a man called the man in the tomb of the Gadarenes. Go to Mark 5. We are finishing with this. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. Who did they find? And when he had come out of the boat immediately, they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Look at 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with the chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and shackles broken pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. I love this. Because demons know the authority of Christ. The man ran and worshipped him. Aha. Uh -huh. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Now, one voice. Then Jesus asked. For he said to him, Come out of the man and clean spirit. Look at nine. 
Then he said, he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So there was one spirit speaking on behalf of the other spirits. That name Legion is a 2,000 foot soldier. It was, it was between 2,000 to 6,000 foot soldiers. So that devil introduces himself in the language of war. Because he says we are legion. We are foot soldiers. 6,000 of us in one man. But they have a spokesman. There is one talking. He's the one negotiating on behalf. That is what we call territorial powers. Now that's the principality. Because the other demons did not have rank to engage with Jesus. So a superior power has entered in that territory. And the one deployed to govern the territory begins to negotiate for the territory. And he lays a very legal ground. What is it? Then he asked him, what is your, oh, go, go to eight. For he said to him, come out of the, oh, okay, go to seven. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you, by God that you do not torment me. Go to, go to, continue. Um, torment me, uh -huh. continue. I hope you are many, look at ten. Also, he begged him honestly that he will not send them out of the country. Out of there. Okay, we'll come to this matter. Let me just go through it. Then Sunday we can deal with this. Is that okay? Because I can see you are Jai Meanza Kuingia. Look at 11. Now a large herd of sign was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. Now at that time, remember the law, the one highest in the spirit has authority. So now they are submitted to him and they are begging him not out of the territory. This is what we call territorial spirits. So you get in a land and there are territorial powers. Every land is configured to bear a certain territory configuration. Some of these lands are represented by animal spirits. The emblem on their flags. You just think China chose a dragon breathing fire. As an emblem of what represent China. You just think Kenyans chose a lion. Begin to interrogate the DNA of Kenyans. Kenyans will insult even the American president on Twitter. That animal spirit. Boldness. Kenyans will boo the president. You saw that thing in Meru. They are booing him and they are dancing just around. And I tell you the president is heavily guarded. Upon as angusha military any time. But you see, that's that's the animal spirit. I don't want to go deeper. But when you go, when you begin to study the flags of nations, people didn't just sit down. Have you realized that even the way nations were demarcated, other than the colonial rule, it bears majority of the people. When you come to Nairobi, you'll discover even the way. Kenya was divided because our origin came from Britain. And one of the greatest altars in Britain is the altar of the Freemasons. That's why when they configured it in Britain, there, there must be a church, government, and a Freemason area. And that's the pattern in our town. I won't go far. Because for some time, Christianity was used as a tool of advancing. It's called the, when the elites took the Bible and they began to manipulate it to advance matters. And that spirit has not ended. The elite are still using the Bible. Can I share an Asian pattern on this altar? Yes? And that has been what has been fighting the church for ages. When our founding father, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, when you go to Samburu, they will show you two houses. One belonged to our founding father, Mzee Kenyatta. Then next, go to Samburu. It was the house of, yes, Bildad. Yes, 
Mike Gia. That man was an apostle. That's where the pattern of church and politics was laid. And this is what happened. Among the Kapenguria six, that apostle was the only one who died poor. But the president could not live without him. He was the one interceding for him. The house of the president was here and his house is next. We went there in Samburu. We were told this is where the man used to live. And any time a man rises in this land with God, it's either politics will come to you or you will go to politics. And the pattern has always been the church becomes the biggest loser. Because from the Asian pattern, seller. So, when you study the configurations of cities, spirits now, this now depends with where is the city. If it's next to the sea, there are configurations. Have you ever seen that Statue of Liberty? What, when you enter America? The goddess Venus. That's a goddess, by the way. That statue was given by the Freemasons of France. And it was planted where? In the sea. It was bronze in color. It's only by oxidation. It turned and became blue. Statue of Liberty. It is lifted at the center of a kingdom. And when you enter that state, the first thing that ruled, this is the land of the free. When I was in Netherlands, Netherlands is the only city where they have recovered land from the sea. You did that in geography class 7 through drenching. So they have recovered land from the sea. Netherlands is the only city globally where when the municipality is designing the city, they design a place called the Red Streets. A street for commercial sex workers legal and they pay taxes now they have recovered land from the sea the, eh. you know when I was walking around there one day I was just doing my rounds there and then I saw a place written cafe hey. so I got in Queen Gear that cafe they don't sell coffee they sell weed so nivilo unaitaka brood row jundia pale kwa kona nilipigwa na moshi 2 minutes nikasikia kichwa imeenda hua hua nikatoka nje nikasema i hope there is no kenyan here sisi cafe kwetu ina maanisha pali pacha yeah and then that man told me this is the land of the free Somebody say, don't take us out of this area. Let, let's read that scripture and finish. I want to show you the victory of our scripture. But am I opening your eyes? So when you get a visa, now you know what to pray. <laughs> Before you go to a land and the next thing we begin to see you posting strange things. Wewe skatiyako inafikanga hapa. Two months later, umengia America. Nwe to na hot pants. Hey, do not you know what happened to the intercessor? What happened to the fabric? But what you don't know, you stepped in a territory and you are welcomed. And you are live on TikTok. Oh my God, we are in summer. Stay kwenye lea sana. Jokuno watu wana tuwachi kutoka America. They might go off. So all the demons, all of them saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. Look at that. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then their clean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the heart ran violently down the steep place into the... Where was the attack? In the sea. So what was the dwelling place? The sea. So what was Jesus dealing with? Marine spirits. He confronted a marine kingdom. 
you see the problem with when you have a devil conscious mind you will begin to see 2,000 pigs, see 6,000 demons, and fail to see one Jesus who sent all of them where they needed to go. My emphasis is not on the demons. My emphasis is on Jesus. That even if we are in a territory, and here Limuru Ziko, even if we are in a territory governed by marine power, we have a Jesus who showed up, and they came and bowed, and they said, why have you come before our time? That is the one we serve. And that is the one in whose name we come with. Hallelujah. That is the one that is in you. The Bible says he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. That is the one that we serve. And he said, you know what? I have no problem whether you're in this territory. I only have a problem because you have caught the wrong man. And Jesus had to deliver this man. And the Bible says the man was an evangelist of ten cities. Decapolis. For Jesus to demonstrate power over the marine kingdom. Guess what he did? One day the disciples are in the middle of the water. And the kingdom has reacted over them. And Jesus in the book of Matthew walks on the water. He walks on the water. The devil is under my feet. So the devil that is disturbing the disciples cannot disturb him. He walks on the water. And Peter desires that realm. He tells him, come. But this realm you can't enter if you don't have faith in me. If you focus on what the devil is bringing, you will drown. But if you focus on me who can walk on water, you can also walk on water. It was the authority over the marine kingdom. I came to tell the church, we are not teaching these things to scare anyone. We are raising you to have the authority to begin to walk over the water in the name of Jesus. That the storms can begin to hear your voice. The chaos in your journey can begin to hear your voice. We are not here to exalt the devil. We are here to lift Jesus hallelujah so that where the marine kingdom has dominated you will not be afraid to enter stand up on your feet because you're about to make some prayers we are going to make a prayer just open up your mouth right now i sense there is an operation that is going to take place in the lives of men as we begin to open up these dimensions i sense there is an operation today we arise against territorial powers we come in the name of yeshua hamashiach wherever you are that's a territory arise as a son of destiny wherever you are planted that's a territory there are forces that try to configure that particular area begin to lift up your voice begin to lift up your voice we are not just raising believers we are raising warriors we are raising territorial commanders let this light begin to become your light and become your guide i don't know where you are some of you come from areas where your parents live you know that there is an infiltration of this particular kingdom the marine kingdom, the mermaid spirits, the powers of darkness, spirits that are there to oppress a generation. Tonight we come, and in this afternoon, we come in the name of the living God. We come in the name of the living God. We come in the name of the living God. Just hold on. I was talking to Edwin. Edwin, this man comes from where people used to worship a snake called Omweri. And he said, Pasi, my home, what you are saying is true. You can't survive in Western. We will come to Mount Kenya dealings because here we deal with forests and land spirits. And those who come from Ukambani, those are desert spirits. I explain a little bit about the mystery of the scorpion and the snake. But those who come from the lakeside, before if there is an accident in the lake, there are rituals that are performed to appease the spirits. Some of the names given to their vessels are names of spirits in that territory. Don't go very far. Just go here in Kisumu, Lake Victoria. There was a time a man wanted to exalt a monument in the city. And some of those monuments are not just monuments. You land in a town and the first image you see is the image of a fish architects that's why freemasons call themselves the great architects they have inspirations that's why the bible says do not form an idol of the things above the things on land and the things in the sea and some of these things are put in roundabouts 
some of these roundabouts act as entries to cities just go and study every town as you enter in those roundabouts what is exalted there what are some of the things that are put there huh. one of the leaders had put some animals in the roundabouts of Nairobi but they were uprooted it was beyond beauty these are gates 